Hello, Rivia. My name is Mark Silvestri, and I'm the Director of Veteran Services. As the Director, I have the privilege and honor of meeting the men and women who have given so much to our country and here in the city, learning about their lives, past and present, and the impacts that they've made on so many. Before I get started, I'd like to remember one of Revere's favorite sons, Morris Morris. Morris Morris was a World War II veteran who hosted a show similar to this called Revere Veterans in Community. We all miss Morris, and this show on our opening day is dedicated to him. Our show, The Veterans Roundtable, will be an informative piece where veterans and family members can learn so many things about veterans' benefits, hear from guest hosts, and ask questions in areas that impact their lives. With Memorial Day on Saturday, 28, with our Memorial Day celebration on Saturday, May 28th at 10 a.m., I felt as though this was a perfect time to kick off our monthly show. I will be speaking on veterans who lost their lives in combat today, as well as a veteran who lost his life just after returning home of World War II. So many veterans that have served our community and continue to serve deserve the ultimate respect. Memorial Day, although a day for the falling, I believe we need to start recognizing other veterans who, are, who have gone to combat, come back with struggles, and ended in suicide. Mission 22 is about 22 veterans that commit suicide on a daily basis due to the struggles after returning home from combat. And I believe those veterans as well as the veterans who were killed in action deserve just as much respect and honor on Memorial Day. And I believe it's time we start recognizing those veterans as well. I hope you can all join us on Saturday at 10 a.m. at the American Legion to join us for our annual Memorial Day service. Today's roundtable, we will be speaking about two veterans who have made amazing impacts on both our country and community. The first veteran we will speak on is Staff Sergeant Charles McMacken. Charles McMacken was part of the United States Air Corps. He was a pilot in a bombardment over Romania during Operation Tidal Wave. On August 1st, 1943, Charles' plane was shot down and never heard from again. Charles was missed in action, later identified as killed in action, but his remains still were not found. Story behind Charles, after being shot down on that day in 1943, his remains were found by a farmer in Romania who preserved the body so well that items Charles had on him, such as a book talking about other missions, was so well kept, we were able to read it when the body was brought back home just last month. An amazing story. In 2017, the United States military was resuming bodies from the Romanian grave. They brought the bodies that they found back to Nebraska, where they started DNA testing, backdating missions and flyovers, trying to put together the pieces to complete the puzzle and figure out who the veterans in this grave were. Amazingly, one was Charles McMacken. Charles' family was informed in 2017 that the possibility of him returning home after all those years was nearing. Excited, Charles' niece came to my office and asked how I could help in making this process a little smoother. And that was a great honor in itself. Sitting with Patty and discussing the issues in Charles' life was amazing. Learning how he given to 
his country, his community, and how sad his family was, never knowing what happened truly to Charles. Well, just a month ago, we had the honor of welcoming Charles home for the first time. Charles landed at Logan Airport just after midnight, where his body was taken in full military honors. We did a procession through the city of Revere. We drove back past McMackin Ball Field, where Charles was actually the member veteran who the park was named after. Then we drove by City Hall and American Legion, where we stopped. It, just after 1 a.m., taps a 21-gun salute, and the mayor, Brian Arrigo, presented the remainder of Charles's family with a citation and challenge coin, welcoming them here to Revere. It was an amazing, somber moment, perfect for a returning member of our country's service and the sacrifice he made. The next veteran we will be discussing is John W. McQuirk. John, a lifelong Revere resident who grew up on Central Ave, worked diligently in our local transportation and train completion and building of train uh, and railroads. That's what John took to the military, was his professional and hard work and knowledge of laying tracks. John served in World War II, made it home, and soon after was killed in an accident back on his job on the tracks right here in Boston. John worked in the Boston Albany Railroad Yard in East Cambridge. John was the second commander of VFW Post in Beachmont 6712, a proud member and the member who started the Women's Auxiliary here in Revere. Also, John was the driving force and a huge advocate for veterans coming home who needed a place to live. John's hard work and diligence was a driving force in bringing veterans housing right here to Revere. As you drive by Coolidge Street now, those veterans' houses there in the back were a direct result of John's hard work. Again, I had the honor of meeting a family member of John's when she arrived in my office to ask questions about his remembrance and if anywhere in the city anything was mentioned about her dad, historical society, any of the VFW posts. And that day was a special day. When you get to sit with family members and actually hear the amazing things that their family have done for both country and right here at home, it's one of the most special parts of our job. As a veteran and a combat veteran myself, I know the sacrifice it takes on both the veteran, military member, and their families. And that is why I take such pride in remembering the men and women who have fought for our country. They deserve the utmost respect. They deserve everything that they've earned. And they deserve someone who can fight on their behalf, whether they're here or not. And that's why I take this job with so much pride. It gives me honor to serve veterans of our country the way they were willing to serve you, people at home. Again, on Saturday, May 28th at 10 a.m., we will be having our Memorial Day service at the American Legion. If you've driven by the American Legion recently, you have seen the whole park has been done over, and it looks amazing. I'm excited for our first Memorial Day service in the new park. We'll be having a collation afterwards, who, which we will serve barbecue food. And uh, the Legion will be open for those members who want to come by and join the event. 
Memorial Day is a special day. And as I said earlier, we have other veterans who have served and come home with very dark times, struggles that only people who have gone overseas and endured the nightmares of battle could understand. Sometimes the darkness overtakes our veterans and suicide becomes an option. Far too many of our veterans today coming home are choosing suicide. 22 a day, the stat says, and that needs to change. But I feel what also needs to change is Memorial Day giving those same veterans the honor of remembering them. They've given the ultimate sacrifice. War was the cause of their demons, and war was the cause that were directly reflected on them taking their lives. These veterans need the, that greatest respect as well. I hope you can all join us on Saturday to show how much pride and respect we have for our veterans. Many will say that my idea of recognizing veterans who have uh, committed suicide is not for Memorial Day. I disagree. Memorial Day is special, and it is for the falling. It is for those killed in action. But I, as I said, the action of some in the direct cause of their suicide, they deserve to be honored too. Again, this is an amazing job where you get to meet so many amazing people, and I am proud to be your director. So please, if you have any questions, concerns, or would like to join the show, or have a family member recognized during the Veterans Roundtable, please don't hesitate to call the Veteran Service Office at 781-286-8119 or you can email me at msylvestri at revere.org. I look forward to seeing you all and I'm excited to shoot our next show of the Veterans Roundtable right here in the city of Revere. Thank you. God bless Revere. And God bless the United States.